I'm Scotty Smith, and this is USL Quick Strike. The weekend of September 7th through 9th, 2018 was headlined by that big, huge, enormous, gigantic clash between Eastern Conference rivals occupying the top two spots. Number one FC Cincinnati traveled to number two Louisville City in a match that was certain to entertain boys and girls of all ages. And it did. For maybe half an hour or so. That's right, friends. The momentary match of the century was canceled. Mother Nature is still undefeated, and she demolished the field at Slugger Park in Louisville. Naturally, many Cincy fans, definitely sitting at home in their warm and dry recliners, decided to criticize the decision makers in Louisville and take a shot at City for playing in a baseball stadium. That prompted pictures from around the Louisville area, proving that all playing surfaces in Louisville were just as submerged as the lost city of Atlantis. It simply wasn't meant to be. It will resume on Tuesday night, with FCC holding a one-goal lead and a 13-point advantage in the standings. In fact, to tell the truth, Louisville is not even in second place anymore. Pittsburgh and Charleston got big wins over the weekend, so those two now hold the second and third spots. Louisville is in fourth, but they could well be in second by the time you listen to this podcast. Indy 11 has spent the last few weeks in the number six spot. Indy defeated Red Bull Reserves 3-0 last Wednesday night behind a brace from Eugene Sterikoff. Bethlehem was crushed by Pittsburgh on Friday night. They slid down to number six. Red Bull Reserves managed to hold on to the seventh spot despite their loss. Well, it looked for all the world like we would have a three-way tie for the eighth and final spot in the East, as North Carolina FC took a 3-1 lead over Nashville into the 80th minute. Alas, it was not meant to be. Brandon Allen scored his second penalty of the match in the 80th, and Lebo Maloto leveled up just two minutes later. Nashville remains in the eighth spot. Ottawa and North Carolina remain just outside those USL Cup spots for now. Charlotte. Penn, Tampa, Atlanta Reserves, Richmond, and Toronto Reserves round out the table. We have a new leader in the Western Conference. Orange County SC is the independent team we all wanted and needed. They are fighting the power and sticking it to the man by overtaking Salt Lake Reserves at the top of the table. It may not last long, though. Salt Lake Reserves and Phoenix Rising are tied for second and both have a game in hand over the O.C., Sacramento Republic remains in fourth, followed by a couple of reserve teams, then San Antonio. San Antonio exacted their revenge on Phoenix Rising Saturday night, repaying their August 22nd loss with a 3-2 victory at Toyota Field. Goals from Cyprian Hedrick, Everett Guzman, and Lance Lang secured three points for the host. St. Louis FC has drawn level with Reno 1868 for the eighth and final spot in the West. The two went head-to-head on Saturday, and Kyle Gregg's 27th-minute goal was the difference. These two teams have a bit of a cushion over 10th place OKC Energy, and this battle should come down to the wire. That will be one storyline that will be fun to watch the rest of the way. Fresno is in 11th, followed by Colorado Springs, LA Reserves, Las Vegas, RGV, Seattle Reserves, and Tulsa Roughnecks. Remember when we told you Las Vegas Lights FC was going to drop $5,000 from a helicopter? Well, they've done it. Like most things in life, the proof is on the internet. A YouTube video of the drop can be seen on the club's YouTube channel or by Googling Las Vegas Lights FC $5,000 helicopter. Oh, and make sure you put the FC in there. Otherwise, you might get a different kind of video entirely. The USL has more addition and subtraction than a second-grade classroom. Orlando City Reserves, who subtracted last year from USL, have been added to USL D3 for the inaugural season. There are rumors afloat that Richmond Kickers, Penn FC, and maybe a couple of other MLS reserve teams could join them. Rochester Rhinos have already pledged their allegiance to D3 for 2020, and many more teams are rumored to enter that year as well. But don't worry. USL should still have somewhere in the neighborhood of 35 teams come 2019, give or take a dozen. Here's three matches to watch over the weekend. I was going to say Charleston Battery and Charlotte Independence, but that match has been postponed due to the 60% chance of hurricane force winds. 
I say we move this game to a neutral site. Memphis, anyone? For really, though, watch Orange County on Sunday night. And I'm not talking about a Jack Black movie. Though, if you haven't seen it, you should really add it to your watch list. It's some of his best work. Orange County SC will possibly be looking to retake the lead. That's if either one of their two top competitors earn max points on the weekend. Orange County takes on Fresno at 8 p.m. Memphis time. San Antonio looks to make it four wins in a row when they take on Tulsa Saturday night. And Pittsburgh hosts Louisville on a field down by the river. You can watch all three games live on ESPN Plus or wherever you illegally pirate USL matches. That's it for this edition of USL Quick Strike. Enjoy your soccer, everybody.